This episode of Transal Tactics is proudly presented by Gordon Food Service. Welcome to Trestle Tactics, a tips from Trestle Short. We wanted to know what's going to make our podcasts more valuable to you. And the answers were simple. You want easy to implement tactics and strategies that will let you create an outstanding experience around your senior living food and hospitality programming. So let's dive in right now on today's Trestle Tactics. Welcome into Trestle Tactics. I'm joined today. She's the co-founder of OWN, and we are going to do a catch-up from our February podcast, where we talked about their smart knob. They have been hard at work on a second generation model, and we're just going to dive in and learn more about the changes and some of the upgrades. So welcome, Akshita. Yeah, thank you so much for having us again, Erin. It's uh, been quite an interesting uh, and fun uh, past year leading up to the Next Generation Knob launch, and we're excited to talk about it today. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about how you came to to some of the changes, some of the upgrades, some of the modifications that you guys have made. Yeah, so as you know, I started the company because of my own mom. So she started a kitchen fire realized that there was a huge gap in kitchen safety. And we created the Gen 1 Smart Knob, which we launched a couple of years ago and got a ton of valuable feedback the last couple of years. And also realized that our target customers are what we call the sandwich generation, right? So middle-aged adults who have young children at home, but also who have aging family members. Yep. And so we, are, we have really prioritized the redesign around serving older adults, whether they live at home or they live in senior living communities, making uh, the device much more user-friendly and at a much more affordable price point. So the Gen 2 smart knob, if you remember Gen 1, it's about half the size. So the reason for the size difference is because we had a lot of compatibility constraints with Gen 1, where we couldn't work on stove tops where the knobs are smaller, closer together. So now Gen 2 works on both gas and electric ranges and stove tops. And is also much, much easier to install. So it just comes in two pieces, a knob bottom, a knob top. And all you have to do is slide this on the stove shaft. And then we have an install key where you just tighten it down like you do a wrench. And then all you have to do is put the knob top back on. So installation is simpler. And then probably the most important thing is that we're able to offer this at a lower price point than we were Gen 1. We really, really wanted to make sure that this product as a safety solution was accessible, is accessible to everybody, regardless of, um, of demographics. So with all of that feedback, we have incorporated all of these changes into Gen 2, and we would love to do a demo for you. That sounds great. Let's take a look at the Gen 2. All right, Akshita, let's take a look at the OM Gen 2. Sounds great. So here's our app. And as you can see, the app is very straightforward and intuitive. All the knobs are paired with the burners just as they look on your stove. And so here, what I'm going to do is turn on uh, burner number three. And like a regular stove knob, you push, you turn. And as you can see here, the LEDs on the knob provide a visual indication of the actual setting of the burner. So to be clear, you're saying that that LED tells you the temperature of the burner? Exactly. So if it's at low and you can see it reflect in the app. Yeah, If sorry, if it right on here, if it's at high, it'll reflect red. And if it's at low, it'll reflect yellow. And then in the middle is uh, medium, which would be orange. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so after you turn it on, we do have that automatic shutoff that is designed to detect an absence in the kitchen and we ship the knob with a default timer of 15 minutes. So what that means is after 15 minutes, if there is no change in temperature setting, we will automatically turn off the burner and we'll send you notification. We don't have 15 minutes here right now. So what I'm going to do is in the app, I'm actually gonna remotely turn it off. So I'm gonna turn it off here and then you'll see the knob rotate on the screen. Nice. Okay. I see how you've got your high, you've got your low. Does the orientation of that change based on the stove and how everything is set up and turns? 
It does. So when you get your knob, after you physically install the knob, we have a calibration process where we will get your knob onto Wi-Fi and then we will ask you to manually turn the knob to all of the settings. So we start at off, then we go to low, medium, and high, wherever they are on the on your settings on your stove. And then the knob will repeat that back to you so that we can confirm the app and the knob both know what your stove settings look like. And you can change them for each burner. So as you can see here, um, if you can see it that closely, this electric stove uh, has a dual zone burner. Uh, so we will ask you to show us where off is and then where low, medium, and high of one zone are and then low, medium, and high of the other zone. So we can really customize the settings for your specific stove. I see. That's a really great feature. One other question. We're talking about the sandwich generation, right? Uh, you're looking to young children, older parents. Are you able to manage multiple stoves from the app? Yeah, so we will be able to manage multiple stoves from the app, uh, which is a feature we call family sharing. Uh, we haven't implemented it just yet because uh, of all the complexities that just come with with uh, launching a, a Gen 2 uh, product, uh, both the hardware and the software. But we do have a feature that we will launch where you can add more than one stove to your account, which means that you can then get alerts from all of those stoves. The way that our customers do it now is uh, just by uh, installing it for their parents themselves, uh, creating an account um, for their parents, and then just getting those alerts uh, directly. Got it. It makes total sense. One last question. You had mentioned the 15 minute timer that automatically shuts things off if it's unattended. How do you, if you're doing something like a low and slow kind of thing on the stove, how do you manage through something like that? Yeah, that's a great question. So the last thing we want is to be obtrusive to your general cooking habits. And so but there's a couple of things we can do to make sure that this is not turning off when you don't want it to. So first of all, you can, as the user, change that automatic shutoff timer from 15 minutes to whatever you want based on your cook habits. So if you know that typically you cook for about 20 minutes, you can change it to 20. If you know your parents shouldn't be cooking for more than 10, <laughs> uh, you can 10. so you can customize that. Now, let's say you want to cook something for a couple hours. You can disable the automatic shutoff by setting a cooking timer. Uh, so when you set that timer, it will override the automatic shutoff and it'll turn off after whatever you set that timer for. So we do have functionality that allows you to get around the automatic shutoff. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we really want to make sure is that safety is the number one priority. So that automatic shutoff timer is really what allows us to do that. And then if if you're setting a timer yourself or if you're changing the automatic shutoff yourself, we know that you are aware of your own cooking activity, uh, which is another thing you want to promote when it comes to cooking at home is being mindful of what you're cooking and how long you're cooking it for. Great. Any other features you'd like to share with us at this time? Yeah, so there's another feature called a safety lock. So I'm going to turn this all the way off just to show you guys that I'm rotating again. What the safety lock is meant to do is, and I'll show you it on the app. So there's this little lock button in the top right corner. I'm going to hit safety lock and turn all the knobs and turn that safety lock on. What the safety lock is meant to do is to prevent accidental turn on of burners. So I'm sure you've heard a lot of the recent stories of dogs jumping on the stove and accidentally turning a burner on, starting a kitchen fire. There was a viral video that went out a few weeks ago on that. And then we just, it's just something that happens, right? You accidentally bump the knob, mm -hmm. it turns on night. And so when these, when the safety lock is on, if the knob is turned on in that time for any reason, our app will recognize that, the knob will recognize that. You can see here, it'll automatically turn off and then it'll send you a notification letting you know that your knob was turned on, even though it shouldn't have been. So we're not only proactively making sure that it turns off when it's not supposed to be on, but we're also letting you know that because there might be, you know, a pet or a kid that's playing with it. 
And where we see this used the most is when the stove shouldn't be used. So whether it's for kids or pets, when you're when you left the house and you want to make sure that nobody's turned on the stove, that's when we see our customers using the safety lock. And then also for older adults. Oftentimes what happens is uh, with early stage cognitive decline is that older adults might cook in the middle of the night without realizing it, right? Then turn the stove on. And so you can actually set this safety lock at night so that if for some reason an elderly family member goes to turn on the stove and forgets and then it's on, it'll automatically turn off. Very cool. That's a really cool feature. I just, I think about one of the things that when our boys were really little, you know, we got a gas stove and we were always concerned that they were going to fidget and fiddle with it and leave the gas on or not even light it, but just have the gas like fill in the entire house because they mess with the knobs. And that is a great feature for safety. Yeah. And, and that's a, a huge benefit for the sandwich generation, right? Because they have young kids, teenagers cooking at home. And, and one of the things we see often is that they've got big, bulky plastic covers on the knobs to make yeah. sure that they're not turned on where they're not supposed to be. And you know, the last thing you want is your kitchen or your stove to look unappealing. And so we found a very easy way with our smart knob to be able to account for those scenarios too. And like we just said, it, it not only happens for older adults, but it also happens with kids and, and pets. Very cool. Well, Akshita, thank you so much for this demo and walking us through this and let's catch up on the other side. Sounds good. There's nothing quite like taste to take you home. When flavors bring you back to county fairs and sweetness incites stories of fresh fruits and farmer's markets. Whether it's the bold notes of a big city <laughs> or the rich profile of a coastal getaway. Gordon Choice Regional Favorites taste like home. Yeah, that was a, a great demo. W one of the things you mentioned early on before the demo was the the way you're targeting older adults and senior living. And so I, I kind of want to spend the last two or three minutes here of the podcast talking a little bit about that. Yeah. So as I mentioned, we saw this huge pull towards using the smart knob for older adults to help them age in place. It's no secret that, you know, the number of adults over 65 is growing every day. So I think the stat is by 2030, 20% 20 of the U.S. will be 65 and up, right? So yeah. what that means is that 90% of them want to stay in their own homes. I mean, who wouldn't? Right. The problem is, is that we've got safety challenges as we get older. Not only do I get distracted or do you get distracted and leave the stove on, but you add mobility issues or memory challenges to that. And then older adults become more vulnerable. So 58% of people who died in cooking related fires were 55 and older. So oh, they are wow. yeah. two and a half times more likely to die in a kitchen fire than the rest of the population, which means that we really need to be able to cater this technology towards older adults so that they can retain that independence. And what that means is not just older adults who live in their own homes, but right. what about all of the multi-unit buildings yeah. um, in your living communities? And the reality there is that over 70% of multi-unit building fires are caused by unattended cooking. So even more of a reason why yeah. we really want to focus on this population so that um, we can uh, serve not only older adults, but their families and their caregivers. That's such great statistics to share because I think about... When I see the device in action, I think about the residents in independent living. There is such a gray area, if you will, of should you be in assisted living or should you be in independent living? And kind of where's that transition happening? And sometimes that's a hard transition for the loved ones to make for that older adult that they're caring for. So I think having these kinds of devices can help maybe not necessarily slow the transition, but if there's pushback and, and uh, of not wanting to make the move to the higher level of care, there's more safety in that IL apartment. Absolutely. So, and, it, and that's twofold because not only are we able to mitigate that 
risk of a cooking hazard and allow older adults to stay where they are most comfortable for a longer period of time. But that decision to move a, an, a family member from their home to independent living or independent living to assisted living is a very subjective one. Mm -hmm. And so what we realized we could do because we've got a smart device that's capturing data every day is we can actually provide a general sense of well-being on a day-to-day -day basis of what mom or dad is doing. So when it comes to activities of daily, daily living, cooking is a big one. Are they cooking, right? If, you know, if they cook every morning, did they stop cooking for a couple of days? And then we also get automatic shut-up information. So if the automatic shut-up all of a sudden starts engaging more frequently, that can be an early indication of some kind of cognitive decline. And yeah. so we now are able to offer clinical care teams and these senior living communities and family members objective data points of whether their family member is doing okay where they are. So it's not just safety, yeah. but it's okay. Can we catch things, right? Can we have some kind of predictive analytics around how mom or dad is doing without being obtrusive? No cameras. You don't have to call them all the time. You have to check in all the time. That's the last thing they want. And so we're able to capture all of this information and provide it in a way that's actionable to these senior living communities and the families. Yeah. It just reminds me of, I did a webinar recently where I talked about using data points to paint the narrative and create the story of what's happening in your community. And that's a perfect example of uh, a data point or two that can really help you be proactive in taking care of that older adult loved one. So Yeah. And, and I think that's where you know, the future of healthcare is, right? Not reactive, but how do we predict ahead of time and how do we slow things down and, and be proactive when it comes to making sure that we're staying healthy, we're avoiding any of the diseases that none of us want to get, but then it also comes down to outfitting your home. And eventually we're going to have to do that too, right? Outfitting your right. home to make sure that you can stay there as long as possible, which means you can't be reactive. You really have to think ahead uh, of what might come down the road. And that's where that's where we want our technology to sit is before you really need it, you've got this implemented and then you're able to get some of that proactive support that we all should have. Yeah. So, well, as we wrap up, tell us what's next with Gen 2 and what things look like towards the end of this year. Yeah. So we are launching Gen 2. So you can go to our website, ownkitchen.com to order for yourself or for a family member. But as we've talked about throughout this entire session, we are really placing a priority around building awareness in the senior living industry. Because at the end of the day, what we really want is when a community is going up, our technology is already installed. This really should be a standard in every apartment and ultimately in every home. So we're really excited to be able to offer now a solution that is much more cost effective than buying a new appliance. It's also cheaper than Gen 1, which we're happy about, but then also has the functionality and has the compatibility to serve the vast majority um, of homeowners today. And so we're excited for the Gen 2 launch and we're excited to get into more communities. Awesome. Well, this has been a, a really cool episode, being able to see it in action, learn more about how it works and operates. And so Akshita, thanks for joining me today on Trestle Tactics. Yeah, thank you so much for having us, Aaron. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Trestle Tactics. Be sure to like and subscribe on any of our channels, YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to us. Also, be sure to follow us on any of your social media channels at Tips from Trestle. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Trestle Tactics.